In this lesson, we're going to be talking about denial of service attacks and distributed denial of service attacks. So there's actually a difference between a denial of service attack and a distributed denial of service attack. Where a denial of service attack, the goal is just strictly to deny service to a particular resource, whether it's an application or a system. A distributed denial of service attack actually looks to accomplish the same goal with a host of coordinated systems. So a fairly large number of systems get told to simultaneously do a particular action that's launched at a target. That would be a distributed denial of service attack. A denial of service attack would be if I were to launch a sin flood against you. A distributed denial of service attack actually requires an additional piece of software. So one of the very earliest pieces of software available to do distributed denial of service attacks is this program called Stockeldraht. And Stockeldraht is German for barbed wire. It actually came out of the work of a guy by the name of Mixter who wrote the Tribe Flood Network and subsequently, the Tribe Flood Network became this other piece of software called Trinu. And finally, we end up with this thing called Stockeldraht. Now, Stockeldraht, in addition to having the ability to do denial of services, has a command and control network. And by command and control network, I mean it has a bunch of clients or bots out in the internet somewhere. And somewhere else, there is a master server that tells those zombies or bots or clients what to do. So you have this client and it has to know where a particular server is. So I've actually got the source code here for this and it's asking me for a host for the master. So when I actually build it, I need to know who the master host is. And I actually need to know two of them because it's going to ask me for two different master hosts. And in this case, it doesn't actually build. But you can see that this is one of those cases where they didn't create configuration files. The master hosts are actually hard-coded into the application. And they're done during the make process. We run this program called Setup. And it actually asks for the master host, and then it gets built into the client application. The other thing that you can see here about this is it's using encryption. That's the blowfish.c. It's using a blowfish encryption cipher in order to encrypt the communication between the master and the client, or the master and the zombie. Makes it a little bit harder to see what's actually going on. But again, in order to do this distributed denial of service attack, you need an additional layer. And that additional layer is usually in the form of a master slave, master zombie, client server sort of model of software, where you have a master directing the activities of a bunch of zombies or slaves or clients, whatever the terminology you feel most comfortable with. For a long time, they were called zombies, and more recently, as the term botnet has really taken hold, they're often called bots. But it's still the same thing. It's somebody's desktop system at home that's been infected with this software, and the user doesn't actually know that it's there, but their system is being used to do a number of things from sending out spam to attacking different sites to any number of activities. So that's really the big difference between a denial of service and a distributed denial of service, where the distributed denial of service requires a coordinated effort on the behalf of several slaves or zombies, potentially hundreds of slaves or zombies, all doing the same sort of activity and they get directed by this master host that's sitting around somewhere talking to all of them. So you get a command and control infrastructure, typically, that comes with the software required to actually do a distributed denial-of-service attack.